Hi, Dr. Lindsay here. I wanted to summarize my thoughts on PRFM uh, since I've been starting to post about it. And uh, yeah, I've been out of my residency for about 20 years now. I don't really try anything new anymore. Uh, I know what works, what doesn't work. And, uh, you know, we get consistently good results with really almost everybody in hair transplant patients. The, the struggle is with thin haired people and, and FUE. Uh, there just doesn't seem to be enough dirt around the roots of uh, hair follicles. So, you know, I'm pretty blunt with people. I don't sugarcoat things. I think that keeps us out of a lot of trouble. Uh, we really avoid the three pitfalls of, of hair transplant surgery, which is putting the hairline too low, particularly in young guys, uh, having a real wide scar, uh, and putting too little hair over too much bald head. And third is I got a really good staff. They're, these guys are really good at microscopic dissection. However, the, the finer you dissect hair, uh, the less surrounding tissue you have around the hair root. And that's okay in medium and large hair bulbed uh, specimens. When you get to really fine hair, there's just not a lot of safety around the root of, the root of those guys. So, you know, we've got plenty of manpower. we got enough manpower to do 4,500 grafts, maybe even 5,000 in six hours. So we get the hair back in well before studies would start to sh studies would show that uh, hair success rate drops off. And we keep the grafts cold and it's uh, sterile preservative fluid. And uh, my placers are really good. You know, I used to place all the hair, and then I placed half the hair, and then I placed some of the hair. And I'm telling you, uh, I would want uh, Wendy and the other girls to place my hair if I were getting put in me. They're just better at it, they're faster at it, and they're more gentle. So, placement's pretty consistent in our office, but it's still these fine-haired guys that just don't have a lot of safety buffer around their hair roots. So, you know, we get pretty good results in fine-haired guys, but, you know, I've planted maybe 3,500 trees uh, on farms and in national forests and in Costa Rica. And I can tell you that if you plant a big, beefy Leyland cypress tree here in Virginia, you can plant that guy with a big root on the sidewalk, and it's probably going to grow. But if you have a skinny little arbor vitae tree, you got to plant that thing in some good soil, and you got to put some fertilizer around the bottom of it, and you got to water it, and it's, they just take more hand holding. We can't really do that with a guy's hair. So what could you put in the slit that would act as a fertilizer? Well, there's probably a couple options that people think about. One's a laser. I do not believe that lasers do anything for hair growth. But I'm going to leave that argument to other people. I know the forum is rife with people arguing that both ways. Help yourself. Argue away. Uh, next is um, minoxidil. I think minoxidil probably does something, but I have yet to see a result uh, in a post-op patient that has used minoxidil compared to somebody that's similar that didn't. Maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't, but the, the mechanism of minoxidil is, is pretty unknown. And some people get dandruff from it. I don't really want to get people getting a bunch of dandruff in my fresh and post-op field. But if people are using it beforehand uh, uh, with no side effects, Feel free to restart at 10 days if you're my patient. So then there's PRP and, and platelet-rich fiber matrix. Um, I've always been a little bit worried about PRP because having done a lot of research in the 80s on fiber and glue, platelets, get, platelets start the clotting cascade, but then they get washed away fairly quickly as um, clotting substrates, fibrinogen, and a whole cascade of uh, clotting substances come in and then grow all growth factors in. I think the platelets get washed away pretty pretty quickly. I know Dr. Fellers had good results with PRP, but I have been reluctant to do PRP just because I know it gets washed away so quickly. Um, and so PRFM is platelet-rich fiber matrix. It's essentially some platelets and a lot of plasma that contains uh, the fibrin, fibrinogen and thrombin to start the clotting cascade, uh, which then draws in uh, growth factors and hormones uh, into a wound field. I did a bunch of research in the 80s on this, won a couple of national awards uh, in repairing neck defects and chest defects with this, and even did a film on how to repair lung defects uh, back then. So I'm pretty familiar with fibrin glue, and I think platelet-rich fibrin matrix is pretty close to what fibrin, fibrin glue is. And so we've been doing fiber and, uh, platelet rich fiber matrix since uh, last October the 3rd. And uh, so we've got about 10 months into it. And I'm starting to see these fine haired guys. I've really only pushed it on the fine haired guys. But again, thinking of it like trees. The skinny haired guys have less safety buffer around the roots. 
So I've encouraged them, saying very bluntly, I don't know whether it does anything or not, but having, having planted skinny trees, you put fertilizer in, the trees grow better. And I'm telling you, every single fine-haired guy that we've done PRFM on that's shown back up for a five to seven month check, that every single one of them that has come back in has looked better than I thought they were going to. So does it do anything? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does something. Does it uh, help hair grow faster and they would catch up uh, if we hadn't done it? I don't know. And does it keep weak hair that might have died or always been weak? Does it help strengthen them so that they're not? I don't know. That's my guess is that they do, that it does that, but it would be very difficult to figure that out without doing some controlled studies and biopsying people's heads. Not a lot of my paying customers are willing to sign up for that. Uh, one of my research associates from back in the 90s uh, is a professor at a Virginia University, and we've been talking on the phone about how to do a study. I don't really have a lot of desire to do rat research anymore and look through microscopic slides, but hopefully we'll find a resident uh, or young physician come along uh, who will do that at some point, uh, and we'll have a, a real clear etiology for how this works. But to summarize, I do think PRFM works, particularly in fine-haired guys. Um, I think it's probably worth the extra cost, particularly in fine-haired guys. Should we be using it in everybody? I don't know. We get pretty good results in most guys to begin with, and particularly in thicker-haired or wirier-haired guys, we get great results without doing it. So would they get better results with it, and is it worth the extra cost? I don't know the answer to that yet. Uh, the following video shows how we produce the PRFM, and the article has um, a couple of references for my publications back in the 80s. Thank you for your time. Thank mm -hmm. you.